The feminist agenda is a huge problem in this trailer. Catering to a certain crowd is just fine, but you have to know how to work with the existing franchise's fan base, and in general, have a story worth telling. Sadly, this potential Batwoman series does neither. Let's look at some potential quick fixes that might make this Batwoman series more palatable. Batman gave up on us. Interesting. Now, why is that? That doesn't sound like the Batman that we know. Now, in the animated film Batman Bad Blood, Batman dies, and Kate takes it upon herself to figure out what happened. She just became Batwoman before. We don't know why. Batwoman was already a thing. While Batman simply going away isn't as powerful as him dying, the mystery of what happened to him should be a big point for this new Batman or Batwoman's motivation. But sadly, it really isn't. Also, the actress saying Batman gave up on us didn't really sell me on her delivery. Batman is the one guy who doesn't give up. Sophie's missing. I thought you should know. Colonel Sophie Moore was Kate's roommate, first introduced in Detective Comics, Volume 1, 859. She's a minor character in Good for an Origin Story, though. She's a colonel. So that's a pretty high standing in the military. Now, this is all under the, or after the events of the New 52, or Earth 1. So we're looking at the reimagined Kate Kane back in 2006 or 2007, which makes her the fraternal cousin of Bruce Wayne and being of Jewish faith. Now, I doubt they'll make a big deal about her religion, though that would add a new dimension to her character. What would a faith-based superheroine be motivated by in a city of crime? That would certainly give a spin on the Batwoman character, aside from her being female and liking other females. Where'd you get this? What happened to staying out of it? So there's not much info on Kate's tech skills, and already the CSI effect is painful in any kind of new TV crime drama. You want to simplify these things. At this point in the story, or at least the events of the trailer, it looks like she doesn't have the bat computer to do anything yet. We need to figure out how Kate got this data. Is it detective work? Did she steal it somehow? Is she a hacker? Whatever. Let's see what she can do outside of fighting. Is there something you'd like to report to your squad? Eh, don't ask, don't tell, not relevant. Simple flashbacks can work, but not fully voiced ones. You don't need this scene. We're not trying to make a statement about gays in the military. We're here to see if Kate is worthy of the Batman mantle. Remember, in Bad Blood, she explicitly does not like the Batman group. Just because I wear this doesn't mean I'm a part of your little cult. Ruby Rose is not a big girl. She's not a fighter, nor is she very physically strong or intimidating. And these scenes aren't selling us on that. There has to be some things she's got over thugs and large men that would lead us to believe she can fight really well. Now, we know in the comics, she was top of her class in the USMA. But the trailer doesn't show or tell us that. And that's a female class, I'm assuming. So punching is bad unless we know she's some great boxer or great puncher. Elbowing, okay, maybe more Street Fighter-ish. Throwing stuff, that would be situational. But it just doesn't sell her being a weapon. We need some martial arts moves, some martial arts masters, some trainers. Uh, uh, knocking a guy into a deformed fridge's sheet metal, nah. She's 128 pounds. She simply does not have the mass to push and hit hard. I don't know what kind of training or meals they provide at the USMA, but that doesn't sound very intimidating or powerful to me. We should know she's some sort of great judo person or something. That would help. Obviously not a heavyweight in boxing or street fighting, but something to say, ah, this is what she's good at. We know what's going to happen when she starts fighting. I need you to send your father a message. This is perhaps the best part of the trailer. The bad guy does bad things, and specifically to the good guy. And good guy loses. This is all good. You, you, you. What is Lucius's son doing in Wayne Manor? Or is this Wayne Enterprises? How did she figure out how to open the secret bat cave door? See, this is bad. Now, if it was a riddle that Bruce left Kate, or a letter, then sure, Bruce had a plan, and that plan involved her. That's a pretty good way of making us believe that Kate's okay for the mantle. It's because Bruce said so. And Kate has the inside scoop of what happened to her cousin, so her authority, her motivation, and her gumption would be justified between herself and the audience. Better still, if she becomes brutal, similar to like Jean-Paul Valley or other Batman, and Bruce has to come back and fix things. That would be a very compelling idea with the promise of a future Batman appearance. 
but we don't get any of that here. You were, you were seriously not supposed to know what's down there. So I have this thing with rules. Being the top of your class in the USMA means you follow the rules to a T. Now, obviously, she's being rebellious here, so the best line of dialogue would have been no dialogue. Just stare at him as you go down the elevator. Just like the previous scene where we're curious where she got the camera footage. Cringe moment number one. Why does the bat suit have boobs? Either this is going to be what's referred to as fridge brilliance, where there's a scene later on where Batman comes back and reveals that he set this all up for Kate to find, or this is all very poorly done. I mean, the bat suit doesn't even look right for some reason. I mean, the crew must be aware of some knockoff Batman suits and they would have found and just, you know, put up on display. And if it is this bad, this is where the seams that the production of this whole thing is coming apart. They should have put a real looking Batman suit in there or a series of not some weird knockoff that's actually just going to fit her normally. The suit is literal perfection. It will be when it fits a woman. Cringe moment number two. Okay, now we know what the showrunners are really doing here. They're woke. This is not good. In order for us or anyone in the audience to care about this character who aren't woke, they need this character to be a person or try to be a person. Firstly, Kate doesn't really think of herself as much of a woman. She thinks herself as handsome and is rather masculine. She's a lesbian, fine. Secondly, this is the wrong piece of dialogue. It should be something like, it will be when it fits me. She's cocksure and trying to take up the mantle, and that's totally fine. Thirdly, it seems the audience is for women and girls, I don't know. Most of the characters in this story seem to be female, and that's cool too. But you gotta sell us on a character, the protagonist. Not on their bizarre fixation on being feminine and, look at me, I'm a female. Make it appeal as a story with believable characters first. Then go into your feminist or female angle or whatever you want to do. Get the basics working, then flavor it up as you go. Another problem is the general information the audience has. We have all kinds of media about Batman. Batman is the most popular superhero ever. We all have this preconception of Batman and why Batman is the way he is. We all know his story. He was the guy who, if he had the motivation and all the resources, could do the impossible. Those that know the comics, though, know that taking up the mantle is no small feat. Most people don't even want to do it who end up doing it. Some are really bad at the job, and Batman has to come back and stop them because they go on a rampage or whatever. The Bad Blood movie was a good example, like, for Dick Grayson not wanting to be Batman. And the last thing I want is to be wearing this damn thing. So having an arrogant lesbian declare herself more perfect than Batman with next to zero context aside from magically discovering his, discovering his cave without Batman's consent is not the way to go, to put it neatly. Batman is a control freak. If anyone took over his bat cave, his suit, his mantle, his gear, he'd destroy them. And naturally, so would the fans. And then we have cringe moment number three. This song is wrong. It paints the whole picture as pushing the fact that this is a woman. Like, we didn't know that already. This is too much. You're trying too hard. You're being too repetitive. And if you're going to go with the Peggy Lee song, go for the actual Peggy Lee vibe or a Batman noir vibe or the 1920s feeling, which Gotham has pretty much always been, where Kate could be a femme fatale or some angle like that. But here she's literally just... Batman who happens to be a woman because the trailer keeps telling us it's obnoxious where's the female strength and sensibility then where's the suspense the mystery or the fear of being the Batman neither of these things are there it makes no sense it's oh I have two X chromosomes and wearing a bat suit is cool therefore I'm Batman or Batwoman or whatever no this is this is not what makes Batman Batman. Being a male or a female does not make Batman or Batwoman themselves. This is not empowering to women. This is dumb bordering on ignorance. She's not intimidating or scary. We don't know her motivations outside of wanting to save a friend she hasn't met in a while and being slightly less obnoxious and less skilled than Damian Wayne. Make her intimidating in some way, like any way. 
For one, the lighting is a bit too bright here. Batman needs to be in the dark, a shadowy, sort of stocky figure, appearing for a moment and giving people panic attacks. She's just not intimidating at all. Now, what is good about this scene is the genericness of the suit. That could be good because she doesn't have the right feeling or the right character down or figured out yet, or what she's doing in general. That's a good thing because it's the first episode or the, or the idea of becoming a character. But it's certainly not good with the music. In fact, I think the music is the worst thing in this because it sets a tone that does not need to be there. You're a female Bruce Wayne. Awesome. Hilarious. Handsome. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dad. No, no, she's not a female Bruce Wayne. Not even close. She's worse than, I don't know, Tim Drake before he became anything else. Like, you know what would have been really good? Or interesting, at least? If her dad, the Colonel, became Batman and then failed, and then she has a reason to take it up because they both love the city they're in, and Bruce left them a note or whatever. Like a Thomas Wayne character, a Jean-Paul Valley, Commissioner Gordon. Um, but just saying she's a female Bruce Wayne without proving it doesn't cut it. A genius billionaire playboy who moonlights as the Batman, the greatest detective ever, who knows almost every martial arts. Um, no. This is a very strange and useless shot of falling into water. I mean, who is this? It lasts for a second. There's no symbolism, and then we just cut to riding on a motorcycle. I mean, what was going on there? Again, this is more auto-tuned, crappy female vocal music I can't understand. Okay, so the suit doesn't look finished, and the glove looks like a cheap knockoff. Those knuckle guards just look bad. Now, this could work, as again, she's going through the ropes of becoming Batwoman. Maybe young Lucius doesn't know what he's doing. Fine. They're all experimenting. That's cool. I just find it odd that the younger Lucius, who knows perfection when he sees it, would give her a crappy piece of gear, despite him talking about how perfect the previous bat boob suit was. Or maybe he's just playing a trick on her. Cringe moment number four. Batwoman was never a replacement for Batman. I can't remember when. None of the bat posse were. Even those who took up the mantle of Batman were arguably not as good as the real Batman, aside from maybe Terry McGinnis, but that's in the future with all this technology and what have you. And she's really not the hero Gotham needs. We don't know what Gotham needs. If we can even bother to joke around with that whole Nolan quote. Again, if you're going to go the dark route, you have to play dark. Batman noir, femme fatale, all that thing. This is not dark. This is trying to be edgy simply by having more women in the story, which I don't know how that's supposed to work. Just get rid of all this silly text on the screen and you should be fine. They think I'm him. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. Cringe moment number five. Okay, you're stealing a man's work or his mantle. His name, his symbol. There's no buildup. There's no plot explanation. You just walk into Wayne Mower or Wayne Tower and just find the Batcave. It's like no one cares. Does Alfred care? Is he alive? Where's Robin? What is going on here? Secondly, you're doing what Batman does. Of course they think you're Batman. And even the little girls think you're Batman. They don't care about your gender. No one does. Thirdly, the next shot is of you changing your appearance. So now they'll know it's not Batman. It's some knockoff female Batman or Batwoman or Batgirl or whatever. Instead of keeping everyone in the dark and suspense and mystery going on, which is part of the mystique of being Batman, you knowingly change your appearance and your brand to be flashier. Congratulations, by being more feminine, you're now less intimidating. The audience needs a reason why you have to suddenly not only be Batman, but be a feminine version thereof. Not just to the Batman fans, but to the general audience as to why they should even bother watching this show. 